Next up, the man most of us know as the number one packet guru ever. Um, this guy, you know, he just told me he has actually performed at Wembley Stadium for 55,000 people. But we are privileged to have him here today as well. Mr. Peter McKenzie, CWNE number 93. Thanks for coming, man. Hey, hello, everyone. Um, it was nice to see, actually, just how many people had heard up to WLA. Um, but also to notice that a few people haven't, so it'd be great to um, tell you a little bit more about it. I'm just going to pose for GT's photograph. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the, um, our industry, the wireless LAN industry, um, and just have a think about what it looks like um, at the moment. We have regulators people like the FCC, or in the UK where I'm from, we have Ofcom, people who govern the spectrum, tell us what channels we can transmit on, what power levels, DFS requirements. They're a big part of our industry. We then got our beloved IEEE, who created the 802.11 standard, um, and um, created nice amendments like 802.11ax. Enough said about that today. Then we have the Wi-Fi Alliance, who certify products, um, primarily certify products against interoperability, but also have been coming out with a lot of interest in other programs recently as well, which impact our industry um, as well. So we've got a Wi-Fi Alliance. We've got CWMP, who produce certifications and certify professionals and people in the organization, um, and we're, we're obviously uh, thankful for CWMP for this conference. Good conference? Yes. yes, we should give. Let's give CWMP a round of applause for this conference. Great conference. <laughs> and then we have vendors. We've got um, wireless infrastructure vendors, and we've got our tool vendors. Um, also important uh, organizations in our industry. Um, and inside all of these organizations, uh, industry professionals, people who are working hard to improve certain areas of our industry. But outside of these organizations, there's also many, many industry professionals, people who are working, doing wireless LAN designs, wireless LAN specifications, validation, testing, um, people who are working for resellers, for VARs, um, all of them presenting and having different views of our industry um, and in different perspectives. And I just want to think about this picture of our industry for a minute. Is there a problem with it? Um, or is it okay that we have a lot of sets of individuals dotted around our industry all with their own ideas about what might improve it and what things are wrong with the industry. Um, and you might say, well, it's, you say we're individual voices, but we come together at conferences like this, and we can get together, we can talk, and we often come up with some really great ideas when we get together. I've been coming to Wi-Fi conferences for a number of years, and the amount of times a group of us have got together Maybe something sparked interest in one of the talks. Maybe it was just a conversation in the bar. And we've gone, you know what would really work for our industry is X or Y, or something that would be a really great idea for us to do. The problem is, the conference finishes. We all go back to our jobs. And we're all busy. And those ideas have to sort of be put to a side for a bit. Because we have to do our day job and earn our money. Um, and all those great ideas often just get left behind at the conference. Another thing um, about being an individual, I might say that, you know what? An indoor access point in the five gigahertz band running at a power level of about 40 
milliwatts, that's never going to actually interfere with any sort of radar system, whether it's a military radar system or a plane. I might have that opinion, and I might think, you know what, why can we not have an exception for indoor APs at below a certain power level from DFS regulations, which just destroy and causes problems to our clients' performances? So yeah, I've got an idea. What I'll do is I'll get my phone out, I'll give the FCC a call, and I'll have a chat with them about that. Hi, yep, yeah, it's, um, hi, yeah, Peter McKenzie here. What, you've not heard of me? You know Peter McKenzie, the packet analysis guy, packets never lie, the magic Wi-Fi guy. Well, well, anyway, you've not heard of me, but I, I just want to talk to you about how I think you should change your regulations around DFS. Oh, they've hung up on me. Um, the problem is, as a lone voice in the industry, it's really hard to get anything done. Um, it's very hard to make a difference sometimes. It's hard to um, ha have any sort of influence on what's happening. Um, and, and I think the other aspect, when you think of the industry like this, is how do our customers, how do the people buying wireless networks view it? Maybe some of you can relate to um, the situation where you are trying to, um, or maybe you're tendering for a wireless network design. And you put down your proposal, you're gonna do, gather the requirements, you're gonna do some predictive design, you're gonna go on site, you're gonna do spectrum analysis, and you lay it all out. And the customer says, well, you know what? The problem with that is this other guy has already given me a design for free. And Look, he's given me a really nice, pretty picture that shows me the coverage, and he's done it all for free. And I'll, well, how can he do that without knowing your requirements, you might ask. And the customer goes, oh, well, it's great. It's OK. He's got this really clever piece of software that designs the network without your requirements. Yeah, but he's put APs in voids. Yeah, he said it'll work really well in there. Does it sound familiar? Because from a customer's point of view, how do they know that I'm any better than the other guy. What makes me any better at designing a wireless network? Why should a customer pay for my two weeks of professional services, or even a week of professional services, to design them a network properly when there's someone saying they're gonna do it for free? Um, and I think these are some of the issues that we face in our industry today. Um, so, let me try and introduce you to an organization that would like to try and fix and help in some of these organizations. And that is the WLA, the Wireless LAN Association. And what we want to do is bring all the professionals in our industry together under one roof to, have, to try and give us one voice. And let's face it, if you look at other industries, that's exactly what they do. You look at people like Accountants, they have chartered accountants and there's a professional association for them to join where they can be defined as a professional and a trusted professional to do a job for the industry. Um, my brother is, works in the theatre. He's a freelance lighting designer, but he's a member of the Association of Lighting Designers, a much smaller industry than our industry, and yet it has a body that represents people working in that industry. It's something I feel we've been missing in the wireless industry, and it's what the Wireless Land Association wants to try and do. And what we want to do is we want to be able to um, have links with all these other organizations. We want to be able to be a voice and a player in the industry that talks and communicates and has good relationships with these organizations that are out there. So that's our sort of aim. Let's just have a look at who's on the executive committee. Um, it's a bit of a rogues gallery of pictures up there, some people you might recognize. Um, but the one thing I want to draw your attention to is every member of our executive committee is a CWE. And we have written into the rules of the organization that to be a member of the executive committee, you have to be a CWE. Why is that important? It's important because we want the Wireless and Association to be run by 
Wi-Fi people. It's for Wi-Fi people, it's for folks like you and for me, but it's important that it's capped and always run by Wi-Fi people. So we've written that into the um, organizational rules that it'll always be capped with CWNEs um, at the top of the organization. What we do in them as an organization? Well, we're trying to build re industry relationships with the organizations we talk to. We've been talking with CWMP about how we can maybe um, work closer with them. Um, we've been talking to the Wi-Fi Alliance um, at our last general membership meeting. For those of you who are already members, we had um, the Wi-Fi Alliance came along and did a presentation. Um, and it was really, really informative. And we're trying to talk with the Wi-Fi Alliance about how we can have better communication. Because we see things in the industry that I'm sure many of you would like to give feedback back to the Wi-Fi Alliance on. Client compatibility, for one. How do they do their testing? What are some of the metrics that they have? And if we can build that relationship, we can start to hopefully have better channels of communications between the two organizations. Um, and, you know, those conversations were in early stages, but we had, um, last week in Lisbon, we had a really positive meeting with the Wi-Fi Alliance, and I'm hoping there's going to be some good news to come of some fairly exciting um, collaborations soon on that front. So we're trying to build relationships. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more about creating standards in one second. Um, but we want to also build a community. Um, so we want to be able to have um, a great community of, of Wi-Fi people that can chat and interact and communicate with one another. We want to create a sort of directory of members, um, and we want to try and put local people who are live together, who may not know each other, in touch with one another. So we're talking about maybe having some regional events where like-minded people can get together, discuss um, issues that are affecting them in the industry, and talk together. Um, we're busy at the moment trying to build membership benefits into the scheme as well, so we've been looking at the possibility of offering some free training. Would free training be good? Free Wi-Fi training? So we're looking at the possibility of trying to offer some free Wi-Fi training to our members and also to do uh, put a schedule together of monthly technical webinars. Not vendor webinars, not marketing webinars, just technical webinars, um, which will be free to all our members. So that's the sort of thing we're trying to work at doing. Um, we've also, um, the, the organization started um, out as the Wireless Land Advisory Board, which some of you may have heard of, um, which started out of an idea at a conference, a little bit like this, um, in the idea of creating standards. Now, when I say creating design standards, some people sit there and go, can you create a standard of how you do wireless land design? Um, and you, you are right, if you got 10 CWEs in this room and said, how do you design wireless network, you would get 10 answers back, I'm pretty sure. But it, we're not so much trying to dis, de, create a standard that actually goes down to the nitty gritty of how do you measure wall attenuation measurements. What we're trying to do is define a process and if you got those 10 CWEs and said, what is the general process you should go through, they would probably all agree. So they would all agree that the first part of a wireless LAN design would be assessing the customer needs, getting the requirements and the constraints of the project. That is something that I'm sure everyone would agree on because that's an important first step. And actually, when you don't do that, it leads to bad design. And then there's a the design, the air of modeling, the reporting, what should be in the report, what should modeling look like, um, installation and validation. There's four steps there which everyone would agree on. So we're busy creating four books um, that are going to detail, as I say, I'd think of them more as a process than a sort of detailed standard like an IEEE standard, but they're going to detail a process. And the idea is that if you follow this process, it will get you to the point where you can design a wireless network that will work. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to be about. We want to be about creating wireless networks that work. Um, so we're, we're trying to put that process in place. And the idea would be, as a member of the WLA, you would sign up to, hopefully, following that process. Um, because you're passionate, as we are, at about just creating good Wi-Fi. 
And that's what we're about, isn't it? That's what this conference is about. It's about creating good Wi-Fi. That's what we want to do. Um, I'm sorry that the slide seems to have gone a little bit funny with some of the writing, but hopefully you can still read it. So hopefully on your tables, you all saw the leaflet about joining the WLA. It's got our website address on it, um, which is on there. It's wlanassociation.org. Um, I also have some wireless and association laptop stickers. If anybody wants one, come and find me. Um, I've got a pile up there, so if you haven't already got one. Um, and that is pretty much me. Thank you for your time. We'd love you to join us. Does anybody have any questions? I have a bit of time if they do. No? Oh, how much is it to join? That's a really good question. Um, it, to join, it is $100 for the year. Um, a lot of people say, well, it, should it not be free? One of the, um, I, I was actually, when I first got involved with the um, organization, I was actually one of the people quite passionate in the fact that we charge people to join. Um, and, and the reason is that is because you can run an organization without any money, can you? I would hope everybody appreciates that. Everybody works in business. It's very hard to do anything unless you've got any money to do it with. So we wanted to keep it small, and we hope that $1,000 is reasonable um, compared to buying a Wi-Fi tool or other things that you might spend that money on. We hope it's a reasonable amount, and it's not going to be a barrier to people entering. But it's $100 a year. Um, we'd love you to sign up and give us your support and, and get involved as well. We have loads of things that need doing, loads of opportunities to get involved in creating those books, creating our design standards, get involved in um, some of the communication with the industries. Give us your feedback. Tell us what you want us to be doing on behalf of um, professionals in the industry. Yeah, another question. Yep, yeah, there's, there's only one article on the blog. I, we have been, we're still quite a new organization, really. It's been, um, and everyone running the organization are volunteers. We all have other jobs, we all have a lot of time. We've been concentrating on getting the sort of website functional and the back end. Um, we are now at the stage where we believe we've done that. And if you got, if there's anyone here who wants to contribute with blogs, come and chat to me. Because we would love to get contribution from people. How many members have you got so far? I think we are, oh, there's a scary guy coming up. I, I think we're, we're, we're around a, about 100 at the moment, but we only really are launching publicly last week, so I'm hoping that will be increasing. It's a scary looking guy there. That's right. Any other questions? Okay. It was just a random selection of icons that I put in there. I'm sorry about that, yeah. But client vendors, we, we want to try and build relationships with everyone. So something which I haven't actually mentioned yet, which I probably should do, is how do you build relationships with vendors? How do we build relationships with um, industry organizations? One, thing, one way we're going to do that is we're actually offering a um, corporate membership to the WLA. We've, we've thought long and hard about how do we get those relationships. That is something we've literally just launched, um, or we're launching at the moment. Um, and when I say corporate membership, that's not vendor membership. Let me be very clear on that. Any organization working in the industry can become a corporate member. So, you know, if you're a VAR, if you're a reseller, if you're a designer and you have an organization, it can join the WLA. Um, as well as if you sell product and you're a vendor. And the whole idea is that we can, what we want to do is we want to bring those organizations on board. We want to get them also wanting the same girl as us, which is good Wi-Fi, and having the people who are installing their Wi-Fi, if it's a vendor, to be doing good Wi-Fi. And by doing that, we're hoping to build those relationships. But it's early days, um, but we're, we're not closed to anyone joining. But my, my, what, what, three things that make someone qualified or to, to um, install Wi-Fi in my book if I was a customer. You, you want to have someone who knows Wi-Fi well. So, for example, hold CWMP certifications. Yeah? And they need to know the vendor well, vendor certifications, and they need to follow a good 
design procedure. That's where our sort of standards come in. And what we want to do as an organization is ensure that the people installing wirelesses are qualified to do it and that there's some recognition when people have those three things that they're recognizing the industry as people who should be the guys doing the work. Any other questions? Yeah, one at the back. Yeah, um, we've not, at the moment, got any relationships with chip manufacturers, but that is something we have talked about. Chip manufacturers, antenna designers, we, we don't want to limit our scope at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's going to take time to get those relationships, but we're, we're, we're actively trying to seek them, um, and, and, and that's something we're really open to. Okay. Okay, yeah, so the question was, would we open to um, people in this room, it might not be a lot of money, but what about students, and would we be able to maybe a blog post? Um, we have talked about student membership. Um, we haven't got too far down that line yet, um, as we're just launching, but we definitely want to be open to people starting that journey. This isn't something just for people at a CWNA level or CWP level. This is for people starting out. They don't need to have any certifications. We want to help them progress and get to that point. So I, I take that point on. And, you know, if people have creative ideas, come and join, bring your ideas with you, and even say, hey, I'll set up student membership. And, and, and give me, we, we need people to help us. So come on board with your ideas. I think that's it. Thank you very much for your time.